Hi, I'm Tony Steffen from Oregon State University. I'm a horticulture and small farms instructor for Deschutes County Extension Service. I'm also a member of the Oregon Bee Atlas and co-leader of the Central Oregon Bee Atlas team. Today, I'd like to present you with my presentation, What Made That Hole? An Inquiry into a Blackberry Stem. Through my studies with Oregon Bee Atlas, I learned that some bees use pithy stems and twigs to build nests in. So last year I decided to take some blackberry prunings and stick them in the soil to see if anything would use them for nesting. By the end of the summer, I noticed a couple of stems had been excavated. Notice the gray twig at the upper right. This spring, I returned to the twig to see what was going on. I noticed there was no cap. I'm not sure that there ever was, but the opening seemed larger. I wondered if this could be the work of a native bee or some other insect. I split the twig open and discovered fully mature, small carpenter bees waiting to emerge. These are native bees in the genus Ceratina. Some of them were packed really tightly together. When making the nest, the mother bee generally uses the pithy center of the twig to create chambers for each egg. There are some exceptions. Notice that we don't see any divisions in this twig. My guess is that the new generation has destroyed the separations in preparation to leave the nest. Males will be in the front chambers and emerge first, and females will be in the chambers to the rear. This arrangement ensures that at least some females will survive if the nest is preyed upon. It also allows males the chance to feed and perhaps gather strength and scout out territory before the females emerge. In my stem, I found three male and five female small carpenter bees. There are 350 Ceratina species worldwide, 22 north of Mexico, and according to a study in 1969 by Stephen Bohart and Torchio, five in the northwest. Small carpenter bees nest in old wood, dead or burned out logs, and broken stems of plants with pithy centers as they don't have strong enough mandibles to chew intact woody material. In western states, they commonly nest in blackberries, raspberries, sagebrush, elderberry, box elder, sumac, native buckwheat, helianthus species like sunflower, and stacky species like lamb's ear. They forage for pollen and nectar on many types of flowering plants. The little bit of pollen they collect is carried on the few hairs they have on their back legs. These are both solitary and social bees. They're solitary by the fact that each female has her own nest, but social by her actions of keeping watch over her eggs until they develop into mature adults. This can take up to a year. Remember the picture of the hole in the blackberry stem I said looked at larger than before? The mother bee sits at the top of the nest cavity in what's called a hibernaculum, which she wallows out so she can move around better. There are a few species like Ceratina dilatoriana and Ceratina acantha that are parthenogenic. This means they can have male and female offspring without ever mating. For those of you who'd like to try to ID this little bee, it can be confused with a bee in the Helictidae family, Lasioglossum dialectus. Here are a few ID tips which might help you in determining if you have a small carpenter bee. You'll need at least a 10 power hand lens to see most of these features. They have yellow or white markings on their face. The male you can see is kind of a five gallon hat shape or some people call it an anchor. The female has a vertical dash. The end of their abdomen is said to be shield shaped with a pointy end. The scopa or the pollen carrying hairs are on the tibia and basotarsis of the hind leg only. This <coughs> 
will help you ID your bee to Ceratina. To go even further with your ID, you'll need a microscope and a key mechanism such as discoverlife.org. The bee on the left is one of my bees. The bee on the right is one from our Oregon Bee Atlas reference collection. It was identified as Ceratina acantha by the Oregon Bee Atlas taxonomist Lincoln Best. Both these bees keyed out the same until I got to the pronotal lobe. You can see that the bee on the left has a cream or ivory pronotal lobe identified by the blue arrow and the bee on the right has a dark metallic pronotal lobe again identified by the blue arrow. This leads me to believe that the bees in my blackberry stem are Ceratina nanula. I hope Link agrees with my determination. Both these are common Ceratina species. These are the resources I used for this presentation. I highly recommend the top three for learning basic and important information about bees around us. The last is for those of you who really want to dive deep into the world of bees. Thank you for listening to this presentation. I hope you go outside and find some small carpenter bees in your area.